Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of March 2012 and it is entitled Animating Non-Human Characters. Now, this is an expansion on the idea and a little bit of demonstration on the thought process behind animating uh, non-human characters that I started to talk about in the November 2011 article, which was called Non-Human Characters, the Spice of Your Demo Reel, uh, or something like that. Uh, let me just make sure. <laughs> yes, Spice of Your Demo Reel. Now, in that article, what I started to talk about was how it is adv advantageous for you to have non-human characters on your demo reel because uh, a lot of reasons. First of all, it sets you apart from all the other people who are doing just bipeds. It sets you apart from all the people who are doing maybe bipeds and creature animation. And it really demonstrates that you have a full, well-rounded workflow that can really be applied to almost any character. Now, by non-human characters, if you haven't read the article, I, I encourage you to go read it. Um, but let me just define non-human characters. It's any character that is an anthropomorphized um, object. Okay, so it could be a toothbrush, it could be a soap bubble, it could be a, um, it could be a stop sign, it could be a car, it could be a toy as long as the toy is not um, a, a biped. So if you, you we're talking about Toy Story, um, a, a non-human character might be the... Um, like uh, the, uh, the, 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 type, the touch and speak, you know, that thing where you can type in the, the words and it kind of like waddles around, um, but not like Woody or Buzz. Um, and in the article I wrote that um, I decided to see how many non-human characters were in uh, commercials and it was, this was during just watching one hour of primetime television. I saw animated soap bubbles, toothbrushes, roaches, I'll talk about that in a second. Germs, snowman, reindeer, bees, cereal bits, devils, frogs, and even a talking shark uh, sitting in an office chair. That's that Snickers commercial where they eat the humans that have had Snickers um, recently. Um, now the thing about the animated roacher, roaches and the reindeer was that they weren't moving like roaches or, or reindeer um, should. Um, the, the reindeer were basically um, sitting down and kind of um, kind of gesturing and the roaches a um, uh, same thing. So I guess actually if we want to get really uh, technical. We should say that those two are not really non-human characters because they were kind of actually sque squeezing a, a quadruped and a six-legged character into um, kind of like human gestures and human, uh, human motion, um, which is a good... Just a good thing to point out is is one of the main differences between ants and bugs life, which is in bugs life the ants were designed to be just anthropomorphic and and just have all the qualities that we want to see in a character that is gesturing like that and acting like that. Whereas in ants, um, it was almost as if they decided like you know what we're just going to like copy just like double the amount of legs they have. So they walk around on four legs. Anything that one of the sets of legs is doing, the other will do. It's basically like bookkeeping, you know? So it wasn't really for the, for the character. And that's why Bugs Life is such a better movie than, than Ants, is that they understand that. Um, not just on the story level, but on, on really the animation level, it's a lot, a lot more uh, sophisticated, I would say. But Bugs Life has a lot of other cool um, non-human characters, um, like uh, Heimlich is definitely a, uh, a, uh, a non-human character because it has, uh, uh, he's like this big like roly-poly character. In fact, worms in, in general are, are super difficult to animate and, and to keep that anthropomorphic uh, feeling. So um, I have a little surprise for you guys at the end of this uh, lecture and um, I think you're really gonna like it. So um, basically, <clears throat> Um, it's, it's, to me, it's clear as day that if I'm seeing all of these uh, in non-human characters in um, television commercials and, um, you know, we're, we're just spiraling further and further away from, from, from center, from comfort um, with animated features, 
there's you know there's lots of lots of features and and and, and projects basically coming out that have non-human characters and if you don't have any experience um there's no time like the present to to get some experience animating non-human characters um now the interesting thing about um it, to me animating non-human characters that um kind of hits home is is the 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 fact that some of the first tests that you would do as a traditional animator would be um, non-human characters. They would be um, uh, like a flower sack, okay, and a bouncing ball or a bouncing ball with a tail. Now those are definitely non-human characters for sure, absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense that you would you would take on those on first. Why? Because you actually have to, and I'll talk about this in a second. You actually have to make more difficult choices with pose with a non-human character than you do with a human character. So it's better to like basically start your training, you know, in that difficult arena than it is to basically have all those, you know, all those, you know, poses that we are all familiar with, all those kind of like, almost like pop culture poses, I, I, I want to call them, where you're relying on and you're leaning on all of this, all of this, you know, uh, you know, all of these poses that you see kind of like every day and are sort of super, super, super like ingrained in, in society. Um, those don't translate well to non-human characters. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that um, uh, as well. But seriously, if you've, if you've never taken on a non-human character, uh, the time is now. And um, I want to, um, you know, I'm always encouraging you guys to be um, checking out workflow, to be working on workflow, and to um, really be taking your uh, workflow seriously. And, the, and, and, and that applies here extremely uh, importantly. And the reason for that is that your workflow is basically how you're going to know whether you can animate something, whether you can perform on the job. You're given a problem basically when you sit down as an animator at your desk and can you animate yourself out of that problem? Can you create an animated solution? basically to that problem is the question. Your workflow will tell you that. Your workflow will, will, will determine if you can do that. <clears throat> and I, from what I've seen and from what I've experienced really, the, the people who can animate sort of any kind of character, be it human or non-human, um, have the strongest workflows, okay? So you, this, this is a great time to test whether or not your workflow stands the test of a non-human character. Or maybe it might be a little too biased towards human characters and bipeds and just, you know, people who are like standing and, and snapping to pose. You don't, you don't know. You don't know until you try, for sure. Okay? So, um, hopefully, um, you know, already you're on board with the, the importance of non-human characters, um, how it can set you apart on your demo reel. How difficult it is um, to, uh, you know, we're, you know, ju we're just scratching the surface on that, and we're going to talk a lot about that um, a little later. But um, not only not only how how difficult it is, but how you can um, really uh, kind of do uh, a, a couple good things. First, stress test your workflow, and um, second, really you know, create a, a, a piece of animation that um, will, will take your workflow basically to the next level. Um, if your workflow is solid right now, it'll, it'll be taken to the next level for sure with a non-human character, okay? So I've animated a few non-human characters for work. Um, I've animated, um, let's see, a, a sponge and an orange. Um, I did a couple bids where I animated a uh, cell phone that was that was um, basically uh, uh, performing, doing performance. Um, let's see. I also animated a uh, a bee, and the bee was the bee didn't have arms or legs, so it was kind of like um, it's kind of like Finding Nemo in that sense. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, that was for another bid. Um, my company, we, we rigged these characters that we got from this um, other company and in that project there was a ton of non-human characters. There was a toothbrush and a blanket and a map and a clock 
and um, all these uh, all these other like um, characters. And um, while uh, while my uh, rigger was rigging those up, um, I was kind of uh, kind of testing them, putting them through the paces, and and um, um, I was very unhappy with the models, uh, just to be totally honest. But um, I was. Um, I was um, I was pretty pleased. I, I felt that we got um, pretty much all the range that one could out of uh, the models that we were given, and so um, and so that project was uh, that was a while ago now. Let's see. I've animated a uh, well. You've seen in the workflow walkthrough. Um, I did the uh, the that flower so flower sack test shot um, in the workflow walkthrough um, part one, two, and three. Um, probably. Uh, uh, flower sacks are the, the the most often. I've probably done maybe a dozen flower sack um, tests um, in my in my life as an animator. Um, let's see, what else have I animated that's non-human? <clears throat> I once animated a um, traffic cone that was um, that was non-human. It was um, for the Department of Transportation, and it uh, it, it jumped out and it wiggled around. Um, that was kind of cool. Um, also, a water drop. We animated a water drop. One of our first projects was um, for the city of Las Vegas, and um, there was uh, there was a, a series of uh, short films and also some like little like interstitial like 90 second um, spots. And those uh, that was that was um, that was definitely um, non-human. Um, some of the ways we got him to move, got, got him to work. Um, See what else. So um, I think that's I think it's all the non-human characters I have um, experience with on the job, and then uh, off the job or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, it's my personal personal stuff. I have a lot of projects. I've written a couple of scripts. One that um, stars entirely non-human characters um, on the uh, uh, shall we say the um, the galactic level. Um, or I'll just tell you, it's basically a, a script about um, a galaxies that are um, they're like little kids, and they're trying to find their 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 their, their place in the universe. Um, and so, um, what else? Um, I think that's it. And then the countless tests and, and stuff I've done with like you know bouncing balls and balls with tails and flower sacks and stuff like that. So. Um, really what I've found, the, the first thing that I want to um, kind of uh, touch on is how you make your pose choices with a non-human character. And I want to ta start with like the best, and that would be probably Pixar. Now what they understand there at Pixar is the um, fact that when you anthropomorphize an object, it needs to have, it needs to evoke the same reaction that the human actor would um, in, in front of you. Same, same reaction or greater, all right? So they, they'd be satisfied with the same reaction, but they're really going for that greater reaction. Remember, Finding Nemo is not a story about fish in the sea. It's about, it's about you know, dads, and it's about letting go, and it's, it's about humans, right? So um, how better to really emphasize and to really, to really augment that feeling of like horror when you're you know, you're looking at your kid playing on the jungle gym and you think he's going to get hurt than by, you know, telling that story as a, a, a clownfish. They're like this big, you know, telling a story about a clownfish that is uh, basically, uh, you know, lost in, in, in the, the infinite black of, of, of the deep sea. So it's just, it's just horrifying and, and that's what we go for. We go for that visually as well when we talk about animating non-human characters. Um, so, of course, when you anthropomorphize anything, you have to give it at least the, the bare amount of, of human um, features that will make it so that we, we want to look at it, so that it's at least appealing. And normally that, uh, that minimal amount is a face. So in um, Finding Nemo, those, the, the fish, super, super, super non-human characters um, in, every, in every way. Um, and they're basically floating faces with some appendages attached to them, but those appendages, the, the first thing that you need to start realizing that those appendages were not always used as the 
as the like human equivalent of what they are. Like the fins weren't always used as hands, and the tail wasn't always used as like feet. Meaning like you know if they if they came to a stop, they wouldn't necessarily like cock their tail to one side or whatever to show that they had like come to a stop or something like that. It was it was used in a lot of different ways. Um, for instance, um, like with the fins, there is one part where where Marlin picks up the um, the damaged egg that is eventually Nemo, um, and I believe he turns it over in his hand or in his fins. But I'm not sure if when you actually look at Marlin's design, um, if his hands would actually come out that far and. Uh, I don't think they could. So I think that re that close up where he scoops up the egg and um, when it goes to, I know his arms like would touch underneath, but I think the shot kind of goes to a close up, an extreme close up where it shows the fins and they kind of like uncover the egg like this. And um, Marlin would have to be way far out of the way in order for that to, to get that shot, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that they cheated that. I'll have to look now. Um, uh, I might be wrong, but um, basically they used them there as hands. But there's other moments when, like, the character notices something and the fins just go outwards, almost like, almost like, like it's like your your ears, like your surprised face, like ears shooting up, um, or listening um, as well with the tail. I'm sorry, with the fins. Um, sometimes the, uh, um, let's see, the, um, <clears throat> what's another good example? Oh, the Ray, Mr. Ray. Um, he, he puts his uh, 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 fin down and his fin basically is like the stairs on a school bus. Right, it's not, and he doesn't. Nece it doesn't necessarily look like he's putting his fin down, and like it's his hand. It actually kind of looks like he's coming to a stop, like on a school bus, and like you know, like letting the, you know, opening the door. It really feels like they're loading onto a school bus when he does that. Not like it's a human doing this, and like this is a hand that the that the fish are coming on. So it's 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 very 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 subtle sometimes and 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 really actually when it when you when you get down to it the, it's almost the more subtle the better okay it's almost the more subtle the better because you get you get you still get that nugget that that little thing that that triggers the the synapse in your brain but you still get to watch something else right. So the more subtle, it's actually the more you're getting the, the, the in, incredible um, a distilled uh, a version of that, but just a tiny little taste of it that will make you feel unmistakably you know, affected the same way as if you were watching like the real thing. You know? you know what I mean? So it's like we get to, it's great because we get to watch uh, a gorgeous blue bat ray, you know, uh, swim around. But we get to feel that, you know, it's a school bus coming to a stop and letting the kids on the bus and then it's pulling away like a school bus would. Not like it's a, a guy in a, a, a bat ray costume going like this, like, okay, kids, here we go, and feeling really lame and stupid. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's really what we're going for. What we really want to do is to access those those distilled moments and give our audience just the strongest impression we can but do it in a subtle way give them give them like an extremely distilled version of of that moment but just give them a drop just a drop and let, just let them be enthralled by what by what they're seeing um which is which is not what they're feeling you know, their feelings, it, it's great. It's, it's the best feeling in the world when you're in the audience and you're feeling just such a strong impression, but you, you're seeing something else. Very, very, very clever um, in Finding Nemo. Um, 
uh, cars as well, just to, to stay on the, the Pixar uh, love wagon for a little longer. Uh, cars as well. Cars is great because um, even more than um, uh, uh, like Finding Nemo, uh, in Cars they really chose some awesome, um, some awesome ways to get the uh, cars, the, the parts of the car feeling um, different and, and what, like appropriate in every single scene. Really, really, really good. Um, I really like that. For instance, in Cars, um, sometimes the front wheels and fenders, sometimes the front wheels and fenders will look like basically the shoulders. Like the character will go like, basically these are the fenders that will go like, mm, I don't know. It's kind of like the, the, the car kind of sinks in and, and does a little bit of a gesture, kind of like dips into the wheels and it almost looks like shoulders going up. Sometimes they'll like touch something. Right, I think there's a uh, part where um, you know they uh, where is um, is it when Lightning McQueen is getting the new tires at um, at the uh, at the the Italian uh, the Italian tailor I can't remember what his name Giuseppe or, or Guido or something like that um, um, and I think he he rolls onto the platform and then he poof, like presses basically presses a button. It's almost like he's going like, okay, boop, and he pops it with his hand. But again, it's the, it's the same car part. It's still the tire and the fender. And then boop, all of a sudden it's a hand now. All right, uh, fine, we're, we're going with hands. Great. And then there's another, there's other moments where like the, there's a character like kind of saying like, well, I don't know. And it almost looks like they have their hand in their pockets and they're kind of like, like shuffling their feet. You know, like, no, I don't know. And like, but again, using the front tire and the fender again, it's like, okay, now you're kind of like, you know, kicking, kicking the rock on the ground, kind of like shuffle, shuffling the dirt with your, with your tire. All right, we're going with feet then. And the audience doesn't obviously stop and say to yourself, oh, I thought that the front tires were the shoulders. Oh, now, now he's using the, what used to be the shoulders, now he's using it as a hand. All right, now he's shuffling around. Clearly, the front tires are his feet. So, um, which is it, right? Come on. Um, there's, there's a moment, I, I believe, with the, with the, with, when Lightning McQueen is, is trying to pull the, um, the tar machine, I believe um, he's um, crawling. Um, he, he's straining against it. I believe the tires are kind of like leaping on the, on the ground as well. I might be making all this up, but the point still stands that the, the, the audience um, is 100% on board at all times. When you are going for those pose choices that will um, give just the tiniest taste of an extremely clear uh, impression that we have in our bodies that anthropomorphizes that human element to the pose choice. Um, so that's um, cars, and then in Monsters Inc. Um, this example, I think I've said this example before, but it's really good, so it bears repeating. Um, and I actually believe it's on the special edition DVD of Monsters Inc. So um, check that out. You might want to go check it out and get the full story. Um, but there's a part in the beginning when uh, Mike was asking and Sully are in the locker room, and one of them is asking him. Um, uh, I think Mike asks Sully for some odorant, not deodorant, it's odorant, ha ha ha. Um, and before he, before he asks for odorant, he checks his armpits to make sure that he smells bad and he doesn't. So he's like, oh no, I need some odorant. But the way he, he does it, um, Mike Wazowski, he doesn't have a nose, right? So how does something without a nose smell? Well, they said, the, the animator said, um, I'm not sure if it was Pete Docter himself who said it, but basically said, well, all we have to do is make it so that um, we have the audience feel like there's a nose there, all right? And um, it's about 50% sound effect, granted, they, 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 they admitted that, but also um, we just take the lips and press them up like that. And if you combine that with the sound effect of a nose, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cover my nose so you can see. But if you combine the sound of the nose and then the lips just moving up, it looks like he's sniffing, like this. Okay, so that's what they did. 
And so he just basically holds his arm up and, and, and what's funny, also funny is that he doesn't have a torso. He's just basically an eyeball and a mouth and there's arms sticking out. So him um, also turning towards, like me right now, I turn my head towards the arm. That also is extremely subtle in a character like, like Mike Wazowski. Okay, so that turn to the, um, the armpit, very subtle with the eye line as well because that eyeball has to do the work of the head, neck, and pretty much upper torso, right? So that he turns just a little bit, eyeball goes, and then just, and you, it, it goes by in a flash. You don't notice it, but it is clear as a bell exactly what's going on absolutely fantastic totally 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 clear it couldn't be clearer i've thought about it how if i had been tasked with that shot i've i've often sat and thought you know what what could i have done this this very interesting moment make a character with no body turn to his own armpit and smell when he has no nose how could i have made that clearer i do not think that i could I'd like to think that I would have come up with the, with the same thing. We'll never know now because once, you, once it's suggested, <laughs> it's, it's, you always think that you, you would be, oh, yeah, sure, I probably would have arrived there eventually. Uh, who knows? So um, what do all of these examples that I've just given you have in common? Um, the, the, uh, the wheels and the fenders of uh, the cars and cars, um, the fins and really the faces uh, uh, in Finding Nemo, and um, Mike Wazowski, basically his, his entire character persona and design um, rolled into one. What do they really have in common? Well, what they have in common is that with non-human characters, you have to find as many ways as you can to hit poses that evoke the exact same reaction as the human counterparts to those poses through the, uh, the character's body and do so in a way that doesn't, that doesn't break the materials, um, doesn't break the, the structure of the character, okay? Meaning you wouldn't want a, you wouldn't want the tire to um, like literally reach out and like bend and like cup something and pick it up, right? You'd st you still want that car to feel like a car. You still want the fish to feel like a fish, right? And if you're working on a, co a commercial where it's a, um, I don't know, let's just say a flower sack, right? I don't know, it's, it's King Arthur flower and they're doing this cute flower sack jumping around, right? You don't want it to um, you don't want it to turn it into something like really, really, really deformed just to hit that pose because it needs to stay, uh, it needs to respect those materials. Um, flower sack is an interesting example because with a flower sack, what you actually have is almost infinite control. You almost have like, you almost have too much choice with a flower, flower sack because it can deform so much or depending on the rig, it can deform a lot. So the point is, is with a, a, a flower sack, like if you wanted it to like, if you wanted it to look like really disgusted, like hmm, you wouldn't like go into the really f minute detailed controls. If you have like bend deformers and clusters like on the surface of the flower sack, you wouldn't want to like push in some eyeball eye sockets and then pull out a nose and then like make a little crease that could be the mouth and then have it go mm, like that. That would be, be really, 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 really grotesque looking. So um, the, 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 the caveat to the, the conclusion we've come to, uh, the conclusion that you need to think extra hard about posing non-human characters and, be, and, and try as much as you can to give the strongest impression of the human equivalent, the, the bipedal, the human uh, 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 pose that you're, you're trying to put into your non-human character, um, um, you need to know that there is a, a limit and to respect the materials and be as clever as you can, okay?
So what's interesting is cliche is really bad for humans and animals. But with non-human characters, you actually have to skirt the line of cliche a little bit. Because when we talk about this, the poses that give the strongest impression, they sometimes need to be a little bit closer to the familiar in order to read to a, a human audience. Okay, so if you, let, let's say you're like on a, a, a kind of like, a, a, you're fasting from points. You said to yourself, I, every single animation I've ever done where someone like says something or, or indicates a direction, um, I've had them point. And I just don't wanna do, I'm not gonna do pointing for a year. Well, in cars, for if you're an animator on cars and someone says like, oh, where is it? Oh, it's over there. Well, you have basically the car body, which moves pretty much together. Um, the, the fenders and the, and, the, and the wheels move independently, right? But um, besides that, I mean, you have very limited choices. So one time you might anticipate with the full, the whole body, the car, and kind of indicate with the car. Another time you might just have it duck down and then shoot the eyes over, like, oh, it's over there. Um, and then finally, you're pretty much gonna have to start going into the little parts and say like, okay, well, I'm gonna have the tire kind of, you know, turn that way or, or, or whatever um, to just, and then all of a sudden, well, you have basically the car equivalent of a point, don't you? So um, we actually do kind of skate the line of, of cliche when we're t talking about um, uh, non-human characters. The difference is, is that instead of thinking of like, instead of the first thing coming to mind and taking it, which is normally how you, you arrive at the cliche, it's like, oh, what is he doing? He's pointing. Oh, well, then I'm going to have him just like point with one finger in the direction, whatever. Um, instead, of, instead of doing, uh, in, 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 instead of cliche meaning that, with, with non-human characters, we, we take that, we take, the, uh, you know, we still go through as many ideas as we can, go through as many iterations as we can with our ideas and try to come up with the, the right thing. And then we kind of back up, we kind of back into, um, we, we add and kind of tweak the animation, um, uh, you know, by adding those things that make it a little bit more a, a human-esque kind of pose. Okay, so meaning, again, back to the car's example, if, you know, the, the car is like signaling with it the whole body, the whole car, and it doesn't look enough like a point, then maybe you'd consider taking the wheel and kind of just having it, you know, shoot out a little bit or adding the eyes on, on top of that or whatever. So um, we, 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 we shouldn't be afraid of of these ideas that come to us that are, are, are very clear and are very familiar. Um, you don't want to go cliche, of course. That, that's still the rule, for sure. But don't be afraid of these ideas that are seeming very familiar because in the end, they're not actually going to read as the, as the exact same cliche pose that it is, right? How can you, you can't possibly, I mean, again, like, unless you, like, use deformers to, like, model a face into the flower sack, you're not going to get that, like, that disgusted face pose. And you're not going to get a pointing finger from a, a car fender, right? Or, or a flower sack. Even though a flower sack has a lot of different parts to it, you're still, you're not going to actually get a pointing finger. So the pose itself is it's actually impossible to copy with a non-human character. So we can kind of, we, again, just don't be afraid of these ideas that are coming to you that feel familiar, because they will help you out a little bit. Um, so let's take a look at a couple like uh, gesture examples. Um, I'm gonna be using plastic animation paper to uh, just, just design a few um, um, pose choices for different kinds of characters. Um, let's start with a flower sack. Um, Flower sacks are great. Flower sacks have a lot of personality, and um, they're 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 really a great test to start with. Um, so let's just design. Oops, <clears throat> what happened there? So um, flower sacks, you know, are are great. They have a lot of personality. Um, if we have, let's let's just take like a normal flower sack design, you know, you know floppy feet and whatever, and and the normal bulging belly kind of design. 
Um, if we want this character to, um, let's say, listen, right? Um, what can we do? Let's have him do like a quick anticipation where he like kind of bends down like this and kind of squishes out a little bit. And then um, he, he, he's listening um, over here to the right. I probably should have anticipated him a little bit more to the left, but um, that's okay. Let's have him listening. Now, what, what kind of decisions am I gonna go through here, okay? Um, let's look at this pose. Um, here's basically his straight up pose, you know, really no character in this at all. I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at the feet, um, and, oh crap, I just gave it away. I'm looking at these things down here, and I'm thinking feet, right? I'm thinking feet because they're on the ground and they're flat and um, I, can, I can do something with these that'll make them feel like feet. I can definitely, I can work with these as feet. Um, but what am I thinking of for these upper, uh, upper pieces right now? What am I thinking of for this animation that, I, that I'm, I'm trying to do? Well, um, let's try them as ears and see what happens, okay? Um, because these bottom um, ones are feet, I'm really going to try to get like a stretch um, in, in, the, uh, in, in the body here because I really want it to feel like he's leaning to try to listen. Um, and if I'm going to try these upper pieces as ears, well, we really want to feel almost like a, a twist in the body. So I'm going to um, have this one straight up, right, like he's listening, and then this one... Um, uh, kind of down, so, so it's almost like a dog, the way a, a dog listens, right? And we've got this nice line through here, this nice stretch in, in the, the body here, okay? So if he hears something over here, then he might listen like this, right? One more time. Okay. Um, another way he could listen is if we actually change this pose to be um, his, these are actually hands, and his hand is kind of like up to his ear, um, kind of like he's whole, like cupping his hand, and we might, we might get something um, kind of interesting by kind of squishing him like this instead. Okay, um, we, might, we might find that uh, it's better actually to have um, both ears um, straight up. So let's, tr let's try one like that. You know, like a, like a dog would, right? See what that looks like. Well, what we would need to do is on this pose, we would need to anticipate those ears down. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Let me add a, add a frame between these two poses and, and start, to get, start to get there. Have them kind of whip up. Okay. Okay, so let me copy this and maybe animate this on twos and then extend this. So just a little quick animation. Um, so now he's, 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 he's hearing something and he's, and he's listening, right? So that's, that's these, um, these uh, flaps at the top, um, basically his hands. Right. Um, by the way, this is plastic animation paper. I'm not sure if you're aware, but plastic animation paper is absolutely free, absolutely free. And um, kind of the cool thing about um, doing pencil tests is it gives you a little bit more of a um, a sense of 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 how your your timing is going to work out. Uh, I really like it um, if I have time. I rarely have time though, which is just kind of the 
Kind of a shame. Right, I'm calling this listening. Ooh. Does not want to behave. All right, I'll rename that later. Okay, so that's saved. I mean, nuke all. Okay, so that's listening. Um, waving, uh, same thing. We can kind of um, can kind of start, you know, with our kind of roly poly uh, 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 flower sack right here. You know, just hanging out. And you know, if he wants to wave at us, then we'll probably um, emphasize one of the um, one of the uh, the flaps here. But we won't have the stretch be in the feet, right? Because when you're waving, it's it's a it's it's actually for me when you're waving, it's a lot more a feeling that you're stretched in the torso, right? Whereas when you're listening, it's like leaning and listening and so that that ear is perked up but it's also you're leaning in you're moving your body so that's why the emphasis on the on the the listening is down low whereas with the waving the emphasis is actually up high so it's a very subtle difference in the body but let's let's see if we can let's see if we can do it okay so we're going to anticipate downwards again um, um, but this time we're not going to uh, we're not going to um, stretch the 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 um, the, t the torse. I'm sorry, the 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 the, the base um, on the next frame. We're going to try to keep most of the stretch in the upper body. Okay. And then this is way up as high as it can go. And this motion, it's not just the pose, it's the motion, of course, right? So you, when you wave, you don't just put your hand up and, and then just wave your hand. Um, a big wave really feels like you're moving your whole torso. But again, it's the emphasis is on the torso here. So I'm going to really try to keep the motion in the torso um, rather than, the, um, than the, the, the base. Okay? So let's have him basically... Over here. And then another one over here. If I really wanted to get fancy, we could do some overlap. Um, we could break this down just a little bit, um, but we won't. Um, I actually don't know how to copy a range. All right, so this should be, hopefully this range, this range copy thing works. Here we go. Okay, so um, decent. Probably want to, let's see here. I want to insert. Let me just let me just insert one between here. That's in the middle. And 
And this one is this one this one's gonna have the overlap on it. Okay. All right, let's just see here. Left. Right. Oops, this goes right here. Okay, so this is up, right, left. Okay. Okay, here we go. Perfect, now let's just copy this. Okay, so a lot of emphasis in the, uh, the upper torso here. And I made that choice so that the way that the character was um, being perceived by the audience was congruent with what we experience when we're watching a human move, all right? So the difference, real quick, between the listening was like the whole feeling of the body leaning and, and listening. What, what did I just hear? And with the waving, it's really like getting that arm up and really stretching and moving it. So that's the difference between the, like these little flaps at the top as ears and as hands, okay? Um, you could, um, let's use them as arms again. Let me really quickly save this one. Um, this is waving. Okay. Um, use them as arms again. Um, one could be, um, if the character is really sad, okay? Um, we normally have the character um, kind of like leaned over. We've seen we've seen this, you know, with the with the two two flaps, you know, kind of. You know, let's say the character is walking, right? Or this one actually, this character actually looks like it's sitting down. Right. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, really, I mean, we're kind of like our, our eye actually just wants to put a head right here, you know, kind of. Because these feel, for me, these feel really strongly as arms right now. Okay. Another, um, another way we can use them is, uh, as arms is um, flexing. Like if you have a character and he's, he's trying to show like he's really strong, um, that might look like this. Right, that might look like this, like he's, he, 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 again, where our eye is almost just like begging for a head right here, you know, because he's, he's flexing really strong. I wonder if we can get, um, if we, 
been a while since I've used PAP. Forgive me, I know it's, it, it takes me a little bit longer to find. Um, I wonder if we can do um, a pose that's almost like kind of like Iron Man or, you know, like um, Iron Man competition, like uh, one of those flex poses. Let's see here. It's like... All right. All right. So I'm going to leave it. I hate this. I hate this, what I've just drawn, but I'm going to leave it up. Why? Um, why do I hate it? Because I went way too far trying to make this upper flap look like a bicep. Way too far. And this is what I'm talking about. There's a certain level where you, you have to stop um, pushing it towards human because you're not respecting the materials. I've deformed this way too much. I've tried to turn it into a, um, a, uh, a human, basically. So I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it. So let's try to um, let's try to fix this. Let's try to let's try to get it um, back to uh, back to something good. Actually, let's do just do a quick pencil test where we we have him flex, All right? So let's start him off. Okay, and then he. Maybe um, maybe he anticipates downwards a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. And then he goes up and looking for kind of like uniform because it like a flex, if you're like in a competition, right? A flex is a full body action, right? So it's like uniform stretch right here. Right? And then, you kind of like, we, we kind of like s slow into that pose. So we need a couple frames where he's, where he's coming down. And this one, this one's gonna loop around. And he's just kind of bulging out a little bit. But we need to we need to make sure that we're paying very close oh, that's not good. Very close attention to how this is, is looking up here. And I'm I'm watching this line. See right here, right here it's at this level, then this level, and then I'm 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 gonna try to really slow it in nicely. Okay. Okay. And then just a nice, just one more pose here where we're just right here. Oops. Um, let's animate this on twos. All right, let's see what this looks like. I'm watching this for the first time too, let's see. All right. Now what I like about this is that it does feel like he's he's using these um, the, the flaps as hands, but um, there's way too much like opposing motion. Like when the, when the, when the, um, let's see, where is it? Hmm. 
here we go. When it starts coming around right here and this um, arm is moving around like this and this one's moving almost like this, um, it, they're, the, the forces are really, really opposing each other. So I'm actually not, I'm, the net effect is almost zero. But um, what, what we can take from this little test is the fact that um, when you're looking at the whole body, you have, um, you have so much to go on with like a flower sack character because the, um, the fact of the matter is with a human body, there are some actions that are extremely full body and some that you actually get so much closer to that distillation of the feeling by using certain parts of the body and emphasizing certain parts of the body, right? So we looked at listening, which is kind of like, you know, leaning and that toe actually points a little bit as he leans and listens. We looked at um, waving, which is more like, yeah, you might like go up on your tippy toes or whatever, but it really actually feels much more like a stretching of the torso when you're waving. And then we looked at flexing, which is like, you know, if you're going to go, Hur! it's basically the whole body Hur! is taking on Hur! that that one um, pose. Okay, so um, flower sacks are, are really, 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 di uh, di not diverse, um, really versatile um, for doing these kinds of animations, so it's really good. Okay, um, then um, with a car, um, I really, really, really like cars. I think that they did a great job anthropomorphizing. I haven't actually seen Cars 2 because it came out um, right in the middle of a crunch time and then I had a baby, so um, that's my excuse. What's yours? Um, <laughs> uh, let me say this is flex. <clears throat> okay. Cars is a very interesting thing. Um, to me at least it is. You have this, you know, character, it's basically, um, it's basically super static, um, because of, because of the materials, but in the end, you have to, you still have to uh, uh, make it so that the, the the character looks like he's feeling, looks like he's walking and talking and 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 and, and gesturing. Um, so, you know, certain parts of this character um, can obviously be different things. The rearview mirrors look like ears a lot. They really, really, really do. Um, so if you if you tilt that rearview mirror up, oops, what did I do? I need, I need to copy. <sighs> Make clone frame unique. There's one of these I know is, oh, backspace. All right, let's see here. Backspace, oh, cool. So um, with this character, um, if I, if I just make this, you know, rear view mirror tilt up just a little bit, um, we get this feeling that it's an ear, right? And he's listening. Um, you obviously want to anticipate this full body and make him, make him listen. In fact, let's do that real quick. I like that. So there's a, a sound over here. And he squishes down just a little bit into these tires. And maybe maybe get a little bit of squish in the in the, the, the hood here and um, bring the eyes down just a little bit. And maybe the end of this, just slow into just a, this extreme bottom pose. Maybe squish the tires a little bit. And just even more squash and stretch. Okay. And then kind of pops out.
And let's have that, that fender, not fender, that rear view mirror kind of starting to come up. And then one more. Raise up, way up in the air. And those eyebrows are really, really cheated. Over here. All right. So when you, when you have that moment where the audience actually realizes what's going on, um, what's great is when you actually have the audience doing the exact same thing. So for, for a gesture like, like hearing something, when the audience hears it, um, it the, the timing of the audience like actually kind of like, turn, like in their seats, literally in the theater, kind of like turning and looking, um, if there's something going on almost at the exact same time as they're doing that, you can get away with so much, or not really get away with, you have so much of your work done for you, um, especially gestures like this where like, it's like such a visceral, such a, such a, a reflex um, rather for the character. You get away with a lot. It's really fun to, to animate uh, moments like these with, with non-human characters. So, um, <clears throat> The, uh, you know, what, what are we, what are we um, trying to emphasize the most here? When you're looking at a character like this, um, you know, the uh, tires, um, are they really his, his feet? Um, at some, sometimes when you have a character like this, the, the, uh, the, the, the tires are neither hands nor feet. Sometimes it's just a, a platform upon which you have like this performing, thinking, breathing, thinking face, and it's, it, it, it's really no more than that. So when you're talking about animating a non-human character that has such a, a different structure to a human, I mean, the flower sack, it kind of has, it kind of, it's easy to fall into those two bottom flaps being feet and the two upper flaps being um, hands, um, sometimes ears. You could even do them like eyebrows. You could have them kind of like tuck in and kind of move like this, like, huh? Like, like kind of like curious looks, um, that kind of thing. Um, uh, but with this guy, you know, side view basically, you know, your car has like these two wheels and you know, this, this doesn't even look close enough to be being a quadruped to even work like that, right? So when, when it is, when you do get a non-human character that has a lot of structural elements that can be used for different things, sometimes they're nothing, okay? Just sometimes they're nothing and they're their own character, okay? Not a lot. Oftentimes we're, it's a lot, it's definitely a thing. But for instance, you know, on the, on the shots where like Lightning McQueen and, and um, I can't remember the Porsche's name, um, well, they're going on a joy ride and they're going through the mountains and the leaves are blowing, or whatever. Um, there's some moments where it's straight up, it's a car on the road. That's it, it's a car on the road. There's, there's moments in the scrub and bubbles, you know, TV commercial where the bubbles, you know, they look like little scrubbers. They, they, they have a, um, you know, I think they have a face like this. And, and they, they talk using this little flap and, and this, you know, there's the, uh, the, the bottom of the sponge and the bubbles come out and whatever. Um, you know, there's moments when they're, they're just scrubbing and they're doing what they're supposed to do. So also, you know, let's not, don't kill yourself trying to like at every single, every single frame decide, oh, what's this? What's this tire going to be? What's this fender going to be? What's this little bristle, you know, on the on the scrubbing bu bubble going to be? What is it going to be? How do I choose? Um, that's not necessary at all, at all, okay? Um, and the reason is because if you make a, a uh, if you do that on every single frame, it's going to switch too often. 
So the rule is we're looking at gestures, all right? Picture's worth a thousand words, but uh, uh, 24 frames in a second is 24,000 words, mathematically speaking, right? No, it doesn't, doesn't really <laughs> work like that. I get it. But when we're talking about looking at a character really performing with, with all his parts, all right, do, do we actually get a, a, a really strong impression of the entire gesture without, without the, 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 the movement being extremely close to you know, what we're looking for in the human? No, we don't. So... The, so so the, 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 the rule is that without that gesture, without that motion, we don't have to worry at all times on all frames what each part of, of, of this character is, okay? So um, that's not an excuse to be lazy, but you, you, know, you want the scrub and bubble to, to you know, go all over the scene and land and then start delivering its line. And if it has a little shoulder shrug, maybe you'll grab the, maybe there's deformers on either side of, of here and you'll get this little, you know, this pose where, where, where it comes up on the side and kind of like, you know, like pops its shoulders a little bit or something like that, okay? Um, but then if it needs to go somewhere else, it's going to, you know, it's going to wind up and then it's going to leave, leave screen, right? And those bristles underneath are going to basically, you're probably going to want to make them drag like, you know, they're scrubbing the tiles as, as he leaves, right? So a lot of this will be up to your client if you're working in commercials, which is where a lot of the non-human characters, uh, non-human character work um, uh, lives. Um, but it's also where a, a majority of the, uh, the animation that uh, you're going to do in your career is going to be for some sort of advertisement commercial uh, you know, spot like that. You know, there's only so many, so many, um, so many shares at Pixar. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've said this a few times, and I don't say this to discourage you from, from going for your dreams. If you, if you work your tail off and you've got the knack, I believe you can get to Pixar. I believe you can. You can. Um, in the meantime, you, you're probably going to um, actually encounter a lot more um, animation for commercials and television VFX um, or games, because there's a lot, a lot more jobs out there for that. So, um, you know, just just a little aside. I'm not sure why why I um, started harping on that. But and anyway, as we're watching this, we just kind of get this um, feeling that the um, character has a um, a uh, you know, a real human quality to it while it's moving. And actually, this is a strong enough pose at the end, um, I feel at least, that we do have a, a kind of a, a, a human, um, especially with, the, with this, um, where this rear view mirror, it, it does seem like a perked up ear a lot, doesn't it? So, anyway. Um. So yeah, cars, cars are very, very, very interesting. Um, you, you may or may not work on, on something that has, and that's, a, that's another thing. Um, car, the cars, they don't deform too much in, in the movie cars. The, the, even the, the, the Chevron cars deform a lot more than the, the cars in, in, in cars do. Um, so um, they rely a lot more on kind of the, the, the parts moving. Um, than they did really um, actually super deforming the characters. They deform about this much, I would say, um, what we're seeing here. Um, so, um, but you know, when you're working with rigid bodies, you need to know that the, the way it kind of moves together um, is, the, is the same thing, same rules apply. You know, just because it's not actually deforming doesn't mean you, you, you shouldn't get squash and stretch in there. You shouldn't get, you know, all your fundamentals and also get the body, get that human body in there um, working for you. Um, and, then, um, and then the other rule that we just went over is that you're looking for the way to fit those, those, those um, kind of like hidden almost distilled nuggets of human movement um, in the gestures, okay? Um, not necessarily having your character end every single gesture on a pose that can, you know, look like a human kind of pose. You know, sometimes the car will roll to a stop and it's a car, okay? Um, 
And then um, I said that there's a little bit of a surprise, and I said that you know worms are are, are um, very interesting and um, super difficult to animate. Um, so the the surprise is is this is a worm rig um, that I um, had uh, made uh, for a short film that. Um, uh, I'm going to give you guys uh, for free. So you can download this um, file um, right after you watch this lecture, um, the zip file, the zip archive below um, the video um, will contain this rig. And um, this is a very, uh, he's, he's very, very, very chubby and he has a lot of like volume preservation um, going on in him. He is not the most, um, um, intuitive rig in terms of like how you're going to get rid of that volume and how you're going to build the poses um, but he is a it's a good example of the kind of rig you might see um, in a commercial setting okay so um, you know you can animate him uh, moving forward it's pretty pretty simple if you just which one, which one is this? Oh, that's the shaper. My bad. So you gotta use, you gotta use these shapers to, to get the right shape here. And then this guy. Right, so it's, it's kind of difficult. And you'll notice that he um, actually has a, um, oops. He has a dynamic, um, um, his head is actually dynamic, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so you can turn off those dynamics if you don't want to see them, um, if you don't want to see them working. This will require a little bit of tweaking. This is not the kind of um, character that you can uh, just um, decide, okay, well, I'm going to have him, you know, um, move over here and then I'm gonna decide what he's gonna do when he gets there. Um, you gotta do a lot more kind of um, work uh, planning the, the motion because it, it very, very quickly becomes uh, kind of cumbersome um, to, to, to use. So I guess what I'm saying is, is it, this is a, um, it's a fun rig to work with. Here we do is this little, this little inch, inching along. You know, we just did that little animation. But as you can see, there's a lot of pops going on. So it, it will take, you know, some frame by frame. It will take some little, little tweaking to get him to get him to look right. You know, I'm just I'm just kind of working straight ahead and, and seeing how how this is this is working, and I'm you know I'm already hitting some places where like right here where there's you know a big pop, you know. You know you'd have to you have to smooth that out, okay? Um, if you if you hit play, you'll notice that the um, or let me let me rotate his head. I just, I just whipped his head around. So you'll notice that the, 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 the back of his head has dynamics on it. Um, you can turn that up. It's very simple to turn up. Um, if you just grab this, um, this controller, you actually have a little bit of extra control on top of it. Um, and then the dynamics um, just have, I've just copied the channels onto, the, um, uh, onto this controller. So you can turn them up or down if you want. Um, turn stiffness down to like 0.1 and then we'll get a very different result. See, it's a lot floppier. Turn down, turn off damping. That should make it a little bit more. Mm. Mm. 
And then um, actually you should be able to in the attribute editor, let's see, select, should be able to select the follicle and actually turn up the, oh, no, I can't find it. Anyway, in the outline, if you know how to select the follicle, you can turn up the um, dynamics even more, okay? Um, so I'm going to give this rig to you um, and then like, you know, start asking yourself some very specific questions. Like for instance, um, you know, if, he, if you wanted him to be like really angry and like slam the ground, would you have him, would you do it with this front here? Would you have him like rear up and slam on the ground with this front here? Or would you have this, the, the, the tail, you know, kind of loop around like this and kind of slam like it's his, it's his fist, you know, damn it. Like if he's if he's pissed off or something like that, which one would you do? Okay, um, when he is, um, he, you know, he, I'm not sure if this rig even has this you know dynamic um, to it. Let me see here. We're stretching it pretty far. All right, it might it might not have this range. Let's just. Let's just see. There we go. He's fighting. He's fighting. All right. Well, it looks like the this is a little too much. I was gonna say, you know, can he coil himself up like a snake? Um, apparently not. This rig can't do it. But there are um, there are you know a lot of questions that you need to answer. Like for instance, what about um, when he's like moving forward as opposed to when he's moving backwards? Like when he's moving forwards, um, it's kind of like um, he's inching along. But when he's moving backwards, is it the forward motion in reverse? Let me zero these out. Okay. Is it the forward motion in reverse? Like basically he, he was inching forward. He was just like inching and then, then moving like this, right? So is it to move backwards, does he move this one and then move this one? Or does he have to actually turn around? Can he, can he not move backwards? And how does he turn around? Does he kind of like hop in a circle until, he gets, until he's facing the other way, like this? Or can he um, basically kind of like curl up? I gotta use these shaper controls. Um, Wait till you see this guy. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's a tough nut to crack, um, but it's, it's going to be great practice for you to, um, to work with a rig that has, you know, this much, um, these many uh, 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 possibilities. And, does, and then does he turn himself around like this, right? And then start moving, start moving off this way, all right? You gotta worry about the, the, the flipping that you're getting. You gotta keep, make sure that you keep all of these controls um, basically, you know, pointing, pointing straight up. Okay, so he's a um, he's an interesting rig, an interesting character. Uh, I can't use him in production, so I'm giving him to you. Um, I, I feel like uh, he does offer enough of the kind of dynamics that we're looking for for um, non-human characters that you'll be able to get some great practice out of him. Um, and when, once you immediately once you open him up, start asking yourself very specific questions as to how you would um, solve some animated animated problems um, with him. Um, specifically, turning him around. It's a very big one um, with with the worm character with no arms or legs. How how does he do it? Um, and then um, how does he gesture? How does he literally gesture without any arms or legs? How do you do really any gestures? So many so many um, gestures rely on the fact that you you can. You, you know, swing your arms and legs, um, whereas, you know, he basically doesn't. So um, I will give you guys that rig. You will have him, and um, he's a lot of fun, and um, uh, totally, totally enjoy him, okay? Um, so let me um, go back over really quick all that we've been... Um, oh, and by the way, ignore version when you open him up. Um, I will make sure that... Um, I'll take out all the version information I can from the Maya file um, so it doesn't error on your machine, but just ignore version when you open him up. And um, he does ship with his textures. You may need to relink those if you want to use them, or you can make your own. Um, so let me just um, kind of quickly go over what we've we discussed in terms of animating non-human characters. 
It's really advantageous for you to have non-human characters on your demo reel. What it does is it sets you apart from people who just have like bipeds just standing and hitting poses and talking and, and doing that kind of stuff. Not that that's not important. It's a huge amount, a huge part of animation is, is that, kind of, that kind of work. Um, and it also sets you, apart, you know, sets you apart from the people who are doing realistic like creature animation. Um, and again, that's a, another huge part. You know, that and the bipedal animation makes up like 95% of the feature animation world, okay? But the feature animation world doesn't make up 50% of the animation world, all right? So the, in the rest of the, the, the animation world, you need to deal with um, anthropomorphizing with motion um, non-human characters. Now, we don't just slap a face on a character and then call it done. You need to know that your your audience is going to be thirsty for, waiting for um, these little flashes of anthropomorphism, where th where they really feel that human gesture coming through the character, and almost almost inexplicably, almost they, they don't know why why they got that that feeling or how how it how it you know how it's so strong or anything like that. Uh, so. Um, when in going for that, we know that we need to, at, um, with each gesture, find a really, really recognizable without being too cliche, but also not being afraid of, of the familiar, inviting the familiar to, to inform our, our choices. And then putting all of the fundamentals and all that great animation that you know how to do into the character. So as to not have just you know like random odd parts wiggling and and it not looking like good animation because you guys you're you're better than that you're better than the the you know just wiggling small parts of the character know know and 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 relish and enjoy the fact that um with anthropomorphized um, uh, non-human characters we get to um really really strongly um but subtly at the same time um, play with our audience and, and, and just elicit all of these responses that um, they, they're not even aware of. So, so really enjoy that. Um, look at fantastic examples of anthropomorphized characters. There's some in Toy Story, just like don't look at Bud or Wood or, or Buzz or Woody. Um, that's, kind of, um, that's kind of just you know, the bipeds, the standing human um, characters. Look at the other toys, you know, the toys that are on wheels, um, those kinds of things. Um, but also Cars is great for anthropomorphized characters. Um, Finding Nemo is basically tubes with faces on them and they did so much with the movement. You know, something, one thing looks like dancing whereas the other thing looks like falling. Like falling in water. They actually did it, you know. Um, and then like um, a really good example, even though Mike Wazowski is a uh, very, you know, anthrop you know, anthropomorphized because he has arms and legs. Um, he also basically has a, a torso, which is his head, which is his face, which is his eyeball. And, you know, all those put together kind of make it so that he um, is a great reference for um, making choices um, as to how to really guide your audience to the uh, reaction that you want them to have. Um, and specifically look for that moment in, uh, when he goes, um, because it's it's stellar. It's gone in a flash, but boy, does it just it just it just nails it. It's beautiful. Um, remember, cliche is bad for humans and animals, but we 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 do need to be comfortable with the familiar and 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 don't rely or rest on the fact, but just know that that when you are putting that familiar back into a very very you know non-human shape. Um, it's probably going to be um, made new, made fresh, and you can make all new choices with how to animate into and out of those poses, okay? So our pose choices are extremely important, very important, and um, just as important or if not more important than when we're doing uh, just human, you know, human characters and human acting. Um, uh, we went through a couple different ideas with the flower sack. If you haven't seen the workflow walkthrough lectures that are in the um, store, check them out. Check out the preview. You can see if you want to see me go through a, um, an entire shot of a flower sack character. Um, um, 
And then um, we looked at flower sack like listening, the difference between like listening and waving and flexing. We used the, um, the top little um, flaps as ears and then arms and then arms again, but really we used the whole body to show that pose choice, right? The listening was him lean and almost on, off his tippy toe, that, that, that other toe was pointed, like he's straining to hear, but the wave felt really upper body like that, and then the flex was full body. Everything kind of came you know, into that flex, okay? So um, th those were three different choices um, we, we made for three different moments, and um, that's how, kind of how you, how you have to do it, while at the same time remembering that you're not picking, like, okay, on frame 25, this is the foot, this is the left ear, that's the right nostril, this is the spleen, okay, Frame 26, that's the pancreas, that's the, the brain, this is the left pinky, and this is the underwear. N none of that. It's, it's deciding on a gesture, make sure that gesture has enough to distill down to that really strong impression, and then once you've decided on it, looking at the character and then for the entirety of that gesture, deciding, okay, what is going to be what? And then knowing that once that gesture is over, it might not be, you might land in a very human looking pose, but when that gesture is over, it's not 100% necessary to really hit a, 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 a new super you know, anthropomorphized pose um, or anything. Sometimes, like I said, when that car you know, gestures and then comes to a stop, it's a car. Just sitting there doing car things, okay? And then I showed off um, the uh, car. I'll give you those plastic animation paper. If you go to plasticanimationpaper.dk, you can download the program for free. It's great. Um, and then I showed you the worm. And um, you'll get that worm for free. Uh, that's going to be in the file. And it's also going to be in the downloads area of the site. Um, you can play around with it. Um, he's a little tricky, a little tricky, but um, but uh, not any more challenging than, than you know, some of the rigs that we've had in production. So um, open him up and then make some choices. Think about him um, rather than just moving him around. Think about him. How would you want to turn him around? Is backwards the same as walking forwards just in reverse? Um, how would you do little gestures like or, or you know, like shrugging or like getting angry or whatever? How would you do it? And then, and then give it a try. Experiment, okay? Um, and that will just about cover it. Remember, you can set yourself apart. It's up to you to really take your animation seriously and to uh, look ahead and look forward to how you're going to distinguish yourself in this industry. There are so many people enter entering this industry, and while that's great, and while that makes it so that there's, there's always going to be innovation and people doing stuff new that's fun to see and, and, and amazing to watch, it also means that you have um, a, more of a burden to, to, to set yourself apart. I really encourage you, if you don't um, want to um, play with the worm, then download a flower sack rig, download a robot, download uh, or make yourself like a sponge or a, um, a, a coffee cup or a matchstick, anything that you um, can start putting those really, really strong impressions of the human gestures and the, that human movement um, into the character. And then you'll be well on your way to, to setting yourself apart as a, as a really marketable animator. Um, that'll just about do it. I really enjoy doing these lectures. I hope you enjoy watching them. Um, each month I uh, pick a new lecture and um, a lot of the times I have done lectures that have been suggested in the re uh, resource wish list which is in the forums so if you have an idea for a lecture you'd like to see please put it into the resource wish list and um and everyone else chime in drop into the resource wish list and and, and um, give me your thoughts on um, some of the ideas that are in there already um i think that'll just about do it thanks for watching good luck with your animation and as always rock on